My name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here. GMAT Review, the official guide, the 13th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The book contains 230 problem solving questions. It has 174 data sufficiency questions. We have already solved every single math problem from this book. If you are interested in watching any of the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. Right now we are in the process of redoing the problems and we are on page number 287. Please turn to it. Page number 287, problem number 132. In problem number 132, we are told that that we bought two kinds of stamps. We bought two kinds of stamps, a 15 cent stamps and a 29 cent stamp. And 29 cent stamps. We are also told, oh that's it, that's all, that's all we are told, that's it. Joanna bought only 15 cent stamps and 29 cent stamps. The question simply is how many 15 cent stamps did she buy? How many? How many 15 cent stamps were bought? Well, let's find out. Let's see what they tell us in the two statements. In the statement number one, they tell us that she, she bought she bought four dollars and forty cents worth of stamps I just noticed that this board I spell it with the O and now it bothers me oh let's not make a fuss about it so we are told that it's four dollars and forty cents is the amount of money that was spent on buying two kinds of stamps fifteen cents stamps and twenty nine cents stamps the question simply is is, it, is this enough information, is this data sufficient for us to be able to ascertain how many 15 cents stems were bought? And if, they, if, if we can figure out how many 15 cents stems were bought, obviously we can also figure out how many 29 cents stems were bought. So essentially what they're asking here is how many of each kind of each, each of these stems were bought if you're told that you spent four dollars and forty cents. Now the simplest, the quickest, easiest way to look at it is sort of solving it algebraically and making it very mechanical and very academic just solve it logically and here's what's going on okay what here's what what you have to understand is that we started out with four dollars and forty cents whether you buy one fifteen cent stamps whether you buy one fifteen cent stamps or whether you buy two fifteen cent stamps or whether you buy three fifteen cent stamps the final amount that you're going to be left over the amount that we're going to be left over listen very carefully the amount that we're going to be left over is either going to end in a five or a zero five or a zero. Now let's see how I can write it here. Regardless of how many 15 cent stamps that we buy, regardless of how many 15 cent stamps we buy, the money left over the money left over to buy 29 cent stamps will end in a 5 or, or a 10. In other words, in other words, we'll either have a nickel or a dime. Once we per here's, here's the bottom line. Once we finish purchasing however many 15 cent stamps that we're going to buy, we do, which, which at this point of course we do not know, but no, regardless of how many 15 cent stamps that we buy, as you can see here, each time you subtract 15 from the amount, at the end, in your hand, you're going to have some change, and that change will consist of some nickels. You will have it will end in a five. You will have a five cents art or, or or a dime. Okay, you got it. I'm not explaining too much here. Now, what does it tell us? It tells us that this 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 in itself. This part, all of this part, tells us that the 29 cents stems that we're buying, 29 cents stems that we're buying would have to be either 5 or 10 or 15 or 20 or some multiple of 5. We cannot buy 4 29 cent stamps. How can we buy 4 29 cent stamps? We don't, we have to spend all the money. 
we have we cannot have any money left over so when we, when we finish buying the 15 cent stamps the amount that we have will either the last digit is going to be either 5 or a 0 this tells us this implies this implies that the 29 cents that the 29 cents that we're going to buy are going to be either 5 of them or or, or or 10 of them or 15 of them or 20 of them or 25 of them or 30 of them and so on and so forth so on and so forth are you with me it's very simple this that's all it is we are, we are done we are done we cannot possibly buy 20 or 30 stamps we cannot buy possibly 20 or 30 stamps because 20, 20 stamps for 29 cents would be almost six dollars 10 cents to two, two of them are 290 almost three dollars 20 of them are going to be six dollars this is going to be even nine dollars we only have four dollars and four dollars and forty cents we cannot buy 20 stamps we don't have money for 20 stamps we don't have money for 30 stamps there we go we, we must have bought 10 we must have bought 10 29 cent stamps well if you buy 10 29 cent stamps that's 290 so here's your 440 you subtract 290 from it for the 10 for the 10 29 cent stamps and what are we left with we are left with 0 1 0 5 and 1 150 150 cents will buy us 10 15 cent stamps that's it we bought 10 15 cent stamps and 10 29 cent stamps that's the only thing that's going to make sense here as you can clearly see we cannot buy 20 we cannot buy 30 now just to convince you here that's it that's those that's we have to buy now it is possible that we, we may have bought 10 or 15, 5 or 15 but when you work through it you will see that it's not possible again we can rule out 25 right away 20, we don't have money uh, to, for 25 cents 25 25 25 down 25 if you buy 25 or, or 15 cent stamps if you buy 25 of, or rather 29 cent stamps if you buy 25 of 29 cent stamps listen carefully okay listen understand the logic I understand that this is the amount of money this is the amount of money I understand that we understand that but I'm going to switch them buying 29 buying 25 29 cent stamps the amount of money that you will spend to buy 25 29 cent stamps is the same amount of money as buying 29 25 cent stamps we don't have 29 quarters we don't have 29 quarters this is 16 quarters and not even we don't even have 18 quarters so we cannot buy 25 it's either 5 or 15 and I'm going to show you very quickly that neither 5 nor 15 is going to work let's work with 15 first if you, if you, if you do 15 well 10 is 10 is 290 10 of them is 290 10 times 29 and half of half of 290 is 145 as you can see is four dollars and thirty five cents for fifteen stamps this is for fifteen this is for fifteen we have two problems here first of all we have a nickel left over we have a nickel left over and we cannot buy a fifteen this are the twenty nine cent system we cannot buy any fifteen cent stamp with it we have, first of all the problem is that we have a nickel left over the second problem is that we're not buying any fifteen cent stamps so fifteen is not possible now I'm going to show you that five is also not possible let's take a look at five if you if you were to buy five 29 cent stamps, five of them are dollar forty-five. So it's four forty minus dollar forty-five. We're gonna have the five, nine, and uh, two. As you can see, if you were to buy 15, 15 cent stamps with two ninety-five, you can't. Three dollars, three dollars would have bought you twenty of them. But here this is gonna be buy you nineteen of them with a dime left over. You're going to have a dime left over. Since you're not allowed to have any leftover money, you, we could not have possibly bought, we could not have possibly bought five twenty-nine cent stamps because if you if you had bought five twenty-nine cent stamps, you would have had to buy, you would have had to buy nineteen fifteen cent stamps, and you will have a, dollar, a dime left over. You can't have that. You can't have that. So bottom line is, I'm, I'm making. We were done long time ago. We were done long time ago because that's the only thing that makes sense there. Once you put 10 in there, things, will, things work out perfectly. There is no money left over. You buy 10 of the 29 cent stamps, you get $1.50 left over, you buy 10 of the other ones. The first statement by itself does the job quite nicely. The first statement does the job quite nicely. A, D, B, C, E. A, D, B, C, E. Now that we established that the first statement by itself is enough, we know now but the answer cannot be B, C, or E. It will have to be either A or D. Let's look at second statement.
In the second statement, they go on to tell us that uh, we bought equal number. We bought equal number of both. Okay, now before we do any work at all, notice that that's exactly what we had found in the first statement. We had found just now that we bought 10, 10 15 cent stamps and 10, 29 cent stamps. That's exactly what the second statement says. As, I, as we always point out, the two statements never contradict each other. Of course, you're not supposed to use the information from the first statement when you're looking at the second statement, but I'm just pointing it out that that's what it is. Equal amount of both. So now we cannot use any other information. All we know is this. We are buying a 15 cent stamp. Let's say, let's say we bought X number of 15 cent stamp, which is going to cost us 15 X in, in cents. These are expressed in cents. And 29 times X is going to be the amount of money that we spend on 29 cent stamps. And that has to equal the amount of money that we spend. This is the uh, money that we spend in cents. Do you see a problem here? We cannot tell how many, how many, or what the X is here because we don't know what M is. M is a question mark. Now what they're hoping here, these people who write the question, what they're hoping is that at this point some people will sit there and say, aha, we know the amount of money from the first statement because they, they come to conclusion that the first statement by itself is not enough. Erroneously, obviously. And they would say, well, since, since, since they gave us the money in the first statement, now we have this equation, putting the two together will do the job. And of course, they end up picking answer choice C. But of course we know answer is going to be A. Because the first statement by itself is enough, second statement is not. Second statement by itself does not do the job. Let's go to the next one, shall we? I need a break. Just give me one second. Number 133. Number 133. In number 133, we are told that we have x, y, and z three uh, three digit positive integer x y and z are three digit positive integers this is 133 we also told that x equals to y plus z the question is is the hundred digit of x is the hundred digit of x equal to the hundreds digit of y plus the hundred digit of z. Do we understand the question? Do you understand what, is the, what they're asking here? When would this be true? When would the 100 digit of x, if x equals to y plus z, when would the 100 digit of x equal to y plus, uh, when would the 100 digit of x equal to the sum of the 100 digit of y and z? Can you tell? Can you, can you make up an example? For example, okay, before, you under, before we do the work, let's, let's, let's look at a simple example. For example, if you are told that, uh, that uh, 254 plus 373, if you were to add them up, this is our y, this is our z, and this is our x, because x equals to x equals to y plus z. The the hundred uh, the hundred digit of x here, the hundred digit of x here, whatever we end up in this box here, has to equal that plus that. Hundred digit of x has to equal hundred digit of y in this case is two, and hundred digit of z, which is three in this case. So does the, does the 100 digit of x in this example equal to the sum of these two? Let's find out, shall we? We're going to get 7 here. Okay, watch what happens. We get a 7 here, and here we have 5 plus 7, which is 2, and we get a carry, carry 1, and we end up with a 6. In this example, 6 does not equal 2 plus 3. x, x does not equal y plus z in this example. So the question is, when would that be true? When would, when would the 100 digit of x equal to 100 digit of y plus 100 digit of z? The answer is, when the sum of the 10 digits of the y and the z, listen carefully, that will be true, this, this, this will be true when the 10 digit of y and the z add up to something less than 9. Something less than 9. Because if it's less than 9, we won't have the carryover. For example, y might be 
Same exact example. 254 and z is 372. And here is our x here. All we have to do is take one of them and change that to a smaller number. Just change that to a smaller number. Maybe instead of 7, let's make it 3. Now it would work. Now it would work. We will have a 6, 8, and a 5, and now x is equal to y plus z. But well, that's not what I meant to say. That's, that's not, this is wrong. I, I, I didn't mean to write it like this. That's, that's not what I meant to say. Let's not, let's not try to write everything here. So here, 6 does not equal 2 plus 3. In other words, 6 represents the 100 digit, 100 digit of x. 100 digit of x, let's call it h, h, x. h subscript x does not equal the 100 digit of y plus the 100 digit of z. Just so, so we don't have to keep writing. Here it does. Here the 100 digit of x is 5. 100 digit of x is 5 and that does equal 2 plus 3. 100 digit of x does equal 100 digit of y plus 100 digit. But for that to be true, but for that to be true, the 10 digits has to add up to something less than 9. The 10 digit of y and the 10 digit of z, for this to be true, for, for this to be true, for this to be true, what we need is, what we need is the 10 digit the 10 digit of y plus the 10 digit of x the 10 digits right here these are the 10 digits these are the 10 digits these are the 100 digits these are the unit digits the 10 digit of y plus the 10 digit of x has to be something less than or equal to 9 this has to be true that's the only way this is going to be true that's the only way when the 10 digit of x and y right here when the 10 digit of x and y are less than 9 or equal to 9 then we don't have any carryover and when we don't have any carryover then the 100 digit of y plus the 100 digit of z will equal to the 100 digit of x because we are told that x equals y plus z. So let's see what, let's see what they tell us now. Statement number one. Let's see what they tell us in the statement number one. Oh, what do you know? What do you suppose they tell us in the statement number one? They tell, they tell us in statement number one that the 10 digit, the 10 digit of x is equal to the 10 digit of y plus the 10 digit of Z. Is that true here? Is it true? Is the 10 digit of is the 10 digit of y is the 10 digit of y plus the 10 digits of z 10 digit of y and the 10 digits of z 10 digit of y and 10 digit of z 5 plus 3 does that equal to the 10 digit of x? Of course it does. Of course it does. Here it does not. Here it does not because we had a carryover. 10 digit of y here is 5, 10 digit of z here is 7. 5 plus 7 came out to be 12, and now the 10 digit of x in this case, in this case, the 10 digit of x is 2, and 2 does not equal 5 plus 7. 5 plus 7, which is this example right here. But over there it does work. So as long as, as long as this is true, as long as the 10 digit of y plus the 10 digit of z equals to the 10 digit of x, that's another way of saying that we have no carryover. And if you have no carryover, if you have no carryover, then the 100 digit of y plus 100 digit of z should equal 100 digit of x. The first statement is enough. The first statement by itself is enough. A, D, B, C, E. A, D, B, C, E. Now that we establish that the first statement by itself is enough, we know now that the answer cannot be B, C, or E. It would have to be either A or D. Let's look at second statement. Where can we put second statement? Let's squeeze the second statement here. We have to erase all of this thing. We don't need any of this thing. In the second statement, they tell us that the unit digit of X. In the second statement, they tell us that the unit digit of X is equal to the unit digit of Y plus the unit digit of Z. Well, what we need to understand is that the question is asking us, is the qu question, the question that we are we, we being asked here is this, the question is this, is the 100 digit of X equal to the 100 digit of Y 
plus the 100 digit of z. That is the question that is being asked. Listen very carefully. And the, whether or not the 100 digit of x would equal 100 digit of y plus the 100 digit of z has to do with what happens in the digit adjacent to it, which is the 10 digit. We just talked about it. As long as the sum of the 10 digit of y and the z is something less than or equal to 9, we won't have any carryover, in which case the 100 digit of x 100 digit of x would equal, rather, 100 digit of x would equal to the 100 digit of y and the 100 digit of z. What we are trying to say here is that the unit digit has no bearing on the 100 digit. Unit digit plays no role. What happens, what happens to the unit digit affects what happens to the 10 digits. The unit digit has no bearing. This information is completely irrelevant. And we're going to show here with a couple of examples that the unit digit plays no role. For example, for example, here's of 525 and 341. So there is our y, there is our z, and here is our x. 866. Six. As you can see here, here the 100 digit of x, 100 digit of x does equal, does equal to the sum of the 3 and the 5. So here the answer is yes. The question was, is the 100 digit of x, is the 100 digit of x equal to the 100 digit of y and 100 digit of z? The answer in this case, yes it is. Let's look at another example. Let's look at another example. And we're going to keep the unit digit the same, 5 and the 1 here. So here we have, so all we're going to do now, listen, all we have to do, we don't have to do, we don't have to do anything here. Listen, I'm going to, instead of rewriting everything, I'm going to just change the color and give you one more example. So we are told in the second statement that unit digit, this unit digit of x, unit digit of x, which is 6 in this case, equals the unit digit of y, which is 5, plus the unit digit of z, which is 1, which is true here. This part is true. And what we will, what we will show now is that the fact that the unit digit of y plus the unit digit of z equals the unit digit of x has absolutely no bearing on the 100 digit. What happens to the 100 digit depends on what happens to the 10 digit. For example, if instead of a 2, if we change that 2 to an 8, if we change that to an 8, then we'll, this 6 will become 2 and we'll have to carry 1 and now it will be 9 and now the answer will be no. Is the 100 digit of x, which is 9 now, is the 100 digit of x does, the, does 9 equal 5 plus 3? Of course, 9 does not equal 5 plus 3. Now the answer is no. So, whether or not the 100 digit of x will equal to the sum of the 100 digit of y and the 100 digit of z, one more time, depends on what happens to the 10, uh, depends on whether or not the sum of the 10 digits of y and the z is equal to or less than 9. The unit digit plays no role whatsoever. Do you understand? Second statement is no good. The answer is A. The answer is A. Second statement plays no role. In this case, is in this case the point here is not that the point here is not that the information that is given in the second statement is not sufficient. The point here is that the information that is given in the second statement is just not germane. It is not pertinent. It's not relevant. Do you understand? Let's go on to the next problem, shall we? Number 134. I need my break. Number 134. I'm looking up something here, just give me one second. And as always, if you happen to be a native speaker, you will find this thing very annoying when I'm about to do. Oh, what do you know? But just as well. I was I was looking in my chart here, in my vocabulary uh, thing here, and the G, to see if we learned the word Germain in our vocabulary lesson. It turns, and I was going to tell you which day we learned the word Germain. It turns out we never covered the word. For those of you who have been watching the vocabulary videos of mine, you know now how badly I suck at the spelling. So spelling may not be correct. The word is germane, which means relevant, pertinent. Uh, and of course, unit digit is not germane to what happens to the 100 digits. Do you understand? What happens to 100 digit depends on what happens to the 10 digits. Let's go to the next one, number 134. In number 134, we are told that we surveyed 100 people. 
surveyed 100 people. Question is, how many said favorable to both M and N? There are two people, candidate M and candidate N. And we went to went up to there. We, we, we surveyed 100 people. We went up to the 100 people, and we simply asked them, "Do you like M? Do you like N?" And they can say, "Yes, I do like him," or they can say, "No, I don't like him," or they can say, "Well, I really don't know. I haven't made my mind yet," which would fall under the category of not sure. That's all it is. 100 people we're going to ask. The question is, how many of them said, "Yes, I do like him," to both M and N? How many of them had a favorable opinion of both M? And, and let's find out, shall we? Here's the chart that is given to us. Favorable, unfavorable, and not sure. M and 40, 20, 40, 30, 35, and 35. So one more time, I'm hoping, I'm not hoping actually, I, 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 I take it for granted, I take it for granted, I demand, I, I require that you have the book in front of you. You must always have the book in front of you. As I always said, do not count on my explaining the, reciting the problem to you. Because I use a lot of abbreviation, I make a lot of changes in the wordings, you understand? So favorable, unfavorable, not sure. This is what is given to us. And this is being 100 people surveyed. The question is how many of them have favorable opinion of both candidates M and M? M and N. Let's find out. Step number one says that 40, 40 did not respond favorable to either. 40 did not respond favorable to either. This is what we are told. 40 did not respond favorable to either. Now what we need to understand here is that what we need to understand here is that the way the way the information is presented to us is a little bit more complicated than it needs to be. We are not interested we are not interested in how many how many said unfavorable we are not interested in how many said not sure. We are just interested in whether or not they said favorable. We are just interested in how many of them said favorable. So why don't we combine these two quantity as simply no. Here we will have yes and here we have no. That's all. We are simply going to ask them do you have a favorable, favorable, favorable opinion of, of, the, of the guy. Either they are going to say yes or if they say I, don't, I have unfavorable opinion, or if they say I'm not sure, we're going to lump both of them together under no. No, I don't have favorable opinion. We don't really care what, the reason behind why they don't have the favorable opinion. Do they not favor? Is it, they, they do not have favorable opinion because they have unfavorable unfavorable opinion, or do they not have favorable opinion because they have not yet made up their mind? We really don't care. It's either yes or no. Let's make it binary, shall we? Black and white. Make it, will make life far easier. So let's do the Venn diagram now. So here is our candidate M, here is our candidate N, and we're looking for, we are interested in how many said favorable, let's look at how many said no. We're looking at no words, no, no, no answers. What? No answers, let's find out. For M, okay, watch what happens. For M, we have 40 plus 20, that's 60. For N, we have 35 plus 35, that's 70. We are told that 40 did not respond favorable. If they did not respond favorable, they said no. 40 did not respond favorable to either. Okay, stay with me in the story. 40 did not favor, respond favor, did not respond, did not respond favorable to either. Which means they said no. Do you do you like him? They said no. Either because they have unfavorable opinion or they were not sure. We're lumping them together as I explained. That 40 is going to go right here. 
because they said no to both the candidates. Okay, stay with me. We are almost done. As soon as you insert the 40 in the middle, as soon as you insert the 40 in the middle, now we have to go back and adjust this figure. Because this 40 is, is counted twice now. This 40 is already here. The 60 people who said no to M are, 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 are in this 40. So we have to go back and adjust the figures. So as soon as we put the 40, as soon as we put a 40 in the center, this 60 is going to become 20. This 70 is going to become 30. That's it. We are almost done. That's it. Now, remember, remember, these are the no votes. And the question is, how many of them are yes votes? How many of them are yes votes, the favorable? Well, let's find out, shall we? Let's find out. 20 plus 40 plus 30. 20 plus 40 plus 30. 20 plus 40 is 60. 60 plus 30 is 90. 90 people said no. 90 people said no to either M or N or both. If 90 people said no, no to either M or N or both, then that implies, then this implies, this whole work that we did there, that implies that 10 must have, must have said yes to both. 10 must have said yes to both. And of course, keep in mind, when we say yes, our yes is our favorable. We have just changed the terminology, that's what it is. The point here is that the first statement does the job quite nicely. First statement is enough. Let's look at second statement, shall we? Let's look at second statement. In the second statement, they said 10 said unfavorable to both. 10 said unfavorable to both. Okay, pay attention here. Yeah? Because they are because we are back to talking about unfavorable, because we are back to talking about unfavorable, we can no longer we don't we no longer have the luxury of combining these two categories together. We cannot do this yes and no part anymore. We do not have that luxury anymore. The analysis that we did in the first statement will not work here. We must look at unfavorable by itself because that's what we are told. We are told that 10 of them, 10 of them said unfavorable to both. Let's, let's do that then. None of this would apply. We have to make a new diagram. So now in the new diagram, what we are going to show are unfavorable. Unfavorable. There is M, there is N, we know 20 of them, we know 20 of them, let me change the color so we can see it here, we know 20 of them said unfavorable to M, we also know that 35 of them said unfavorable to N, then they go on to tell us that 10 of them said unfavorable to both, that 10 is going to appear here. As soon as we insert the 10 in the middle, which is counted twice, we have to go back and adjust this figure. This 20 becomes 10, this 35 becomes 25. Now let's see what we, what we get at the end. 10 plus 10 plus 25, 10 plus 10 plus 25, 10 plus 10 plus 25, 10 plus 10 is 20, 20 plus 25 is 45. This is 45. If this is 45, if this is 45, this implies that 55 must have said either not sure or favorable to both. Because this, this amount only adds up to 45. This amount only adds up to 45. There are 100 people all together. There are 100 people all together. 45 of them said, 45 people said unfavorable to either M or N or both. Which means 55, 45 people said unfavorable to either M or N or both. Which means 55 people said something other than unfavorable to these candidates. Something other than unfavorable is either not sure or favorable to both. And the question is, how many of them said favorable to both? That is the question. How many of them said favorable to both? 
But we cannot answer that question until we have this figure. This figure is missing. We do not know this figure. We do not know how many said not sure to these candidates. And until we have that figure, we cannot figure out that. Second statement is not enough. Second statement, alas, is not enough. The answer in this case is A. That is sitting from the previous work. It turns out the answer is same in this example also. The answer is, I do not know why. Why, when we figured out that the first statement was enough, we did not do any work here. But anyway, the answer is A. Answer is A. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.